hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. I think many people sitting before me have forgotten that. I'd also like to speak about my experience on January 28th, because as many of you have already been informed, I work as an Occupy Open medic. I'd like to know how many of you have cleaned tear gas out of the eyes of a child. Anyone? I'd like to know how many of you have cleaned one of those really cute beanbag round wounds. I'd like I'd like to know how many of you even know what is in one of those things that they call beanbag rounds. Because I can assure you, it's not beans. It's not plastic. It's small lead pellets. I'd also like to know how many of you have treated a hand burned by a tear gas canister. I have. I'd like to know how many of you have treated a wound from a rubber bullet, which again is a lead pellet encased in very, very viscous rubber. None of you have. I have. None of you have seen what less lethal force does to the people of this city. But I have, because I'm out there in the streets every time you allow OPD to use these things against peaceful protesters. And I'm the one who cleans it up. Several people before you today have said that the blood is on your hands, but that's not true. The blood is on my hands, because I'm the one mopping it up with my trial blood hands. I'd also like to speak about the accusations about outside agitators. I'd like to know exactly how many OPD officers live in Oakland, because when I was being unlawfully detained on January 28th, I asked the gentleman arresting me, excuse me, may I ask you a question? Do you live in Oakland? And he said, of course not, it's way too dangerous there. I'd also like to know how you can accuse us of being full of outside agitators when you bring in mutual aid from other police agencies. Now, granted, I've never been a police officer, um, but I'm fairly certain that bringing armed men and women and armored men and women in armored vehicles into this city is far more outside agitation than anything a couple kids from Pleasanton could possibly do. I'd also like to address something that you said to me, Ms. Brunner. You said that when I got up here before, I requested not to have my time started until everyone was making eye contact with me. You're right. I also don't interrupt anyone. And I also shouldn't have to ask any of you to make eye contact with me when I speak here. I am an Oakland taxpayer. I am an Oakland citizen, unlike Deanna Santana. I'd also like to point out that, let's see, Kaplan is paying attention, De La Fuente is paying attention, Brunner is paying attention. Brooks, not so much, but kinda. Mr. Reed is paying attention. The city attorney is paying attention. Ms. Schaaf is paying attention. Ms. Nadell is paying attention. Ms. Kernigan is paying attention. Deanna Santana, who is the one person sitting before me who is not an Oakland resident, is not paying attention. Instead, she's quite obviously filling with her phone. I have stated time and time again that it is criminal for you, Ms. Santana, who will still not make eye contact with me, to take such an elevated salary from this city while not reinvesting the funds into this community but it is doubly criminal because you don't pay attention to the people who live here. Now, on the subject of this proposal <coughs> to prevent any future court shutdowns, what many people seem to be forgetting is that there's also an amendment in this same proposal that prevents people from marching in the streets by way of peaceful demonstration. I read to you the First Amendment earlier. I hope I don't have to do it again. I would hope that everyone still remembers it. It wasn't that long ago. <coughs> Excuse me. Read it again. Okay. The fact of the matter is requiring city permits for peaceful marches is unconstitutional because the city issues those permits selectively. We know from experience that the city won't issue permits to occupy Oakland because we've had several people try to obtain them. How is it lawful for you to make an amendment or to make a proposal saying that you want to take this right away from people when the First Amendment clearly grants them that right? We don't need a permit. 
The First Amendment doesn't say anything about going through city officials. The First Amendment doesn't say anything about paying a fee to peaceably assemble. The First Amendment grants us that right, and we will continue to utilize that. When I was standing up here before, I finished reading the Fifth Amendment, but I didn't get a chance to get to the Sixth and the Eighth Amendments, both of which have been violated. Um, so I'd like to continue and, and read those to you now. The Sixth Amendment. In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed, which district shall have been previously ascertained by law, and to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation, to be confronted with the witnesses against him, to have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor, and to have the assistance of counsel for his defense. I read this to you because on January 28th, over 400 people were arrested many of whom were held over 50 hours without being arraigned or, in fact, even actually booked. <coughs> I'd also like to read to you the Eighth Amendment. Excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. On January 28th, when over 400 people were unlawfully detained by OPD at the behest of the City Council, Several people were denied medical treatment, were crammed into cells that were far too small for the amount of people in there. People were not decontaminated after being exposed to chemical weapons. You know, if I have a cough, it's because I was locked in a room with people who were covered in tear gas for over 24 hours. <coughs> Excuse me. In addition, we've noticed that OPD tends to have a habit of accusing people of assault on an officer when they have the audacity to accidentally run into a police baton. The reason this is a violation of the Eighth Amendment is because this then acts as a bail enhancement, making it very difficult to get these people out of jail after they've been beaten by OPD. Now, I still have about three minutes left, um, and it's been brought to my attention that there was somebody here before who was speaking about their experiences in Tahrir Square and in Egypt and that nobody paid attention to that person. So I would like to use my next three minutes as a, as a period of silence out of respect for the people who have lost their lives protesting for these very same things in Egypt. A corrupt government is a very, very sad thing. And it is the duty and the right of the people to rise up against it. And you should all give respect to those who are fighting for that in Egypt.
Thank you.